Okay, we are going to talk about modern portfolio theory. We're going to get some fancy terms, but I want to uh, cover some ground because most of you watching this video have the typical asset allocation buy and hold strategy that your advisor, I don't care if they're at Merrill Lynch, Ameriprise, Edward Jones, wherever it's at, are telling you this is what you should do. And it's all based on this modern portfolio theory hypothesized by Harry Markowitz in 1952. And what he basically said is, okay, on an axis, you have a return axis and you have a risk axis. And there is what's called an efficient frontier. It looks like this. And there's all these different asset classes that you can choose, all these different types of investments. And I'm going to touch on all this in a second. It'll, it'll all bring it home. And the point is you can design a portfolio through asset allocation. You can design a portfolio that is here. But by optimizing it, you can have the exact same return. Meaning, so you're on this same axis here. Exact same return, but with less risk by doing this asset allocation efficient frontier and when advisors are designing this if a person's younger and they can take more risk then they're they're going to try to create a portfolio up here if someone's retired want to be conservative they're going to create a portfolio down here but the whole point is you're trying to get as close to this line as possible so if you buy into this and all of wall street has done that and it's not just individual investors it's also the the big pension funds the big dollars, right? The billions of dollars. Because what happens is in order to have this efficient frontier, you have to have managers that are focused on their discipline in each one of these areas. So when you're creating a portfolio and you have a manager that's here, he's got to stay there. And if you have a manager that's here, he's got to stay here. Because when you design a portfolio, everybody's got to be doing their job. And this is where Morningstar came in. Morningstar created this style box and it's it's nine boxes within a box and this is they have it for fixed income bonds and they also have it for stocks I'm going to show you this is for this is for stocks so this is the equity style box so you have large company medium-sized company and small companies and then you have value companies blend which is kind of being half pregnant really doesn't make a lot of sense to me and then you also have growth. Okay. So if you are a large cap growth stock manager and you looked up your, your prospectus, you looked up your morning style webpage, this box would be filled in. You are a large cap growth manager. And so you would be, if you're creating a portfolio, you would have this dot right within there. Okay. So whether you're an individual investor or a big pension fund, now think about it. Let's, let's go from the pension side of this billions of dollars at work and you have this investment committee that says well we're trying to design this portfolio and we need a large cap growth manager so if you are a large cap growth manager and you want to be hired right you want this pension money to give you you know 50 million dollars and they say we're going to do this if you are a really good large cap growth manager then you're going to do everything in your power to stay within this box. In fact, there's going to be a mandate that you stay within this box. So why is Wall Street bought into this? Well, they bought into this because if everybody plays the same game, then they all get their piece of the pie, right? Everybody gets along. Everybody gets their share of the money. To reinforce this, let me show you this. This is called a, a Callan periodic table. You probably haven't seen anything like this since chemistry class in high school, right? So this shows all the different asset classes by return by year so the higher you are up the better your return was and i just chose this through 93 through 2012 and i'll explain why in a second and i chose this one from 93 through 2012 because it shows the s p 500 with this yellow line and the barclay aggregate bond index fixed income index with the, the blue line here every box here represents a different asset class so let's just take a look here this is emerging markets the russell 2000 growth the s p 500 growth this is the EFI, so this is the Europe, European, Australian, Far East Index, Russell 2000. Uh, this would be, I guess, considered the blend S&P 500, I guess, considered to be blend S&P 500 value, Barclay uh, bond agri, and the Russell 2000 value. So you can see that the point here is, let's just look at the, uh, the, 
the Barclay bond value. Bottom of the barrel, down, 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 middle, down. All of a sudden, we have a crisis. Everybody goes to fixed income for safety. It's at the top. Everybody thinks of recovery. Bottom four years in a row. 2008 meltdown. Everybody flies to safety, fixed income, uh, and they're at the top. Then they drop right, right, drop right back down to the bottom. Now, if you're a money manager, there's not a pension fund or investment platform in the world that is going to give you the freedom to try to pick what you think is going to be the winner, the one or two winners each year. And they're going to allow you the freedom to go all over the map. They're not going to let you do that. So what they do is each manager picks their box and they stick to it. And then the portfolio overlay comes along and says, well, we want a piece of this, 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 and they just try to optimize it. So you can probably tell by the tone of my voice that I may be skeptical of this. And, and the thing is that I'm not. I'm actually a fan of this when markets go up in general. This efficient frontier, the Callan chart I just showed you, all of these stock, whether you're large, medium, or small cap company, whether you're a value or a growth company, they're going to be pretty tightly correlated. The point of the efficient frontier is to get non-correlation, meaning as some things are going up, other things are going down, and you get this blended return. But the numbers don't support that. This buy, asset allocation, buy and hold strategy works very well when the markets go up. But guess what? They do not work when the markets go down. When the 2008s occur, you don't have enough money in the one or two investments that happen to perform well and everything gets cratered. This is why I'm a fan of the alternate equity space, which is, I've done other videos on that. This is the ability for the manager to participate in these arenas here when the market's going up, but then have some hedging component when the markets go down. And if you want to understand more about what I mean with this, then watch the video about the, the two restrictions, the two restrictions that, that every money manager has that kill you in the 2008s. And that's a separate video, so you can watch that. So thank you for letting me introduce you to Modern Portfolio Theory. And as always, if you want to see other videos, subscribe to this, go to brinkmanacademy.com. But I appreciate you watching. Thanks.